March 17th, St. Patrick. Records differ on the actual birthplace of St. Patrick. It is either noted as England or Scotland. St. Patrick's parents, Calpurnius and Concessa, were both Romans. When Patrick was around 14 to 16 years old, he was captured by pirates and brought back to Ireland to be a shepherd. The people in Ireland at the time were pagans or druids, and they did not have any Christian education. St. Patrick learned the language of the people, now known as Gaelic, as well as their culture and traditions. While he was held captive, St. Patrick grew in his prayer life, turning to God for solace and comfort. As he grew older, he felt called to share his faith with the people of Ireland who did not know Christ, the one true God. His understanding of the Irish people helped him to communicate with them and reach them in a way they could relate to. When St. Patrick was 20 years old, he escaped from his captivity after receiving a dream from God. In the dream, he was told to go to the coast of Ireland. This journey was over 200 miles. When he did this, he found sailors on the shore who were willing to take him to his family in Britain. While living in Britain, he had another dream, this one showing the people of Ireland calling out to him, calling him holy and begging him to come walk among them once more. St. Patrick began studying for the priesthood after this and was later ordained by St. Germanus. Later, St. Patrick was ordained bishop and sent to spread the gospel in Ireland. St. Patrick arrived in Ireland on March 25th, the year 433. Upon arriving, St. Patrick met the chieftain of one of the Irish tribes. He threatened to kill St. Patrick. When this chieftain's arm was made immovable, he started listening to St. Patrick's preaching. He received the message and was converted to Christianity. After this, his arm was again able to move freely. This conversion was just one of many that St. Patrick brought about in Ireland by preaching among the people. Some people began following him, and he sent them out to preach as well. St. Patrick and his followers combined to convert thousands of Irish people. Churches were built throughout Ireland. When kings were converted, their families and kingdoms were also converted. St. Patrick's method of sharing the Christian belief in the Trinity with the Irish is linked to perhaps the most widely known Irish symbol worldwide, the shamrock. Using this readily available plant, St. Patrick was able to make the mystery of the Trinity a concept that was easy to grasp, explaining that though the shamrock contains three individual leaves, these leaves grow from the same stem, making them into one plant as a whole. In the same way, he said, God is three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yet as the shamrock is one plant, the three persons of the Trinity are one God. In using this example, which could be found in any yard or on any hillside in Ireland, the people were able to begin to grasp the complexities of the faith to which they would dedicate their lives. St. Patrick preached all over Ireland for 40 years. Over these years, he worked many miracles. He also wrote of love for God in his confessions. St. Patrick died on March 17th in the year 461 in Saul, where he had built his first church in Ireland. His remains are buried in Downpatrick, Scotland. It is commonly said that St. Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland. In some legends, he drove them to the ocean to drown after they plagued him during a time of fasting. Other stories state that there were never snakes of the reptilian variety in Ireland. However, they were a powerful symbol to the pagans who lived in Ireland at the time of St. Patrick. Some believe that the idea of St. Patrick driving the snakes out of Ireland is a metaphor for St. Patrick spreading Christianity throughout Ireland, thereby removing pagan traditions and symbols, such as the snake. St. Patrick is the patron saint of engineers, those afraid of snakes for protection against snake bites, Ireland, and Nigeria. He is the patron saint of engineers because of the many churches he built. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort me and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in the hearts of all that love me, Christ in the mouth of friend or stranger. One of the many prayers St. Patrick passes on to us.